in this evening. Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? Amen. Fantastic ministry by the young guys. Amen. They did a fantastic job. Uh, both of them, I believe, it was their first time ever preaching. And so I feel the stress, brothers. Um, I understand. I remember when I preached my first sermon, my brother Aaron in the back, uh, he probably remembered this, but I was in the 180. We were preaching an altar call, just an altar call, not even really a sermon, but extremely nervous, man. Mine went blank, forgot everything that I was going to say, and God helped me through it. Amen. But if you have your Bibles, if you could turn to the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew 25. Matthew 25, we'll be reading there uh, starting in verse 1. Um, but I begin to think, you know, on what to preach. I was actually wrestling even last night, um, and God put this sermon uh, on my heart. I wrote this sermon a few years back at the Prescott Conference um, and uh, for our, our youth. Amen. And I don't know about any other youth leaders in here, um, but I count it a privilege, and I, I, and I love pastoring the youth, um, even there in Chandler. Uh, we've got a great young youth group. We run about 50 to 60 teenagers. We've got our own song service. We've got our own ushers. We've got three bands. We've got two drama teams. And so God is building a powerful church within the church. And it all starts with the youth. Amen. And so I count it a privilege uh, to be here. I thank God for Pastor Ed, uh, Pastor Deontay for the opportunity to be here um, and preach God's word. Amen. And so, but it all starts with the youth. I'm going to say that again. It all starts with the youth. Amen. Amen. If you're a young person in here, listen, sky's the limit for what God wants to do in your life. I got saved when I was 18 years old. I came into the church. I was bound by drugs, came from the street life, gang violence, uh, totally destroyed my life. I already had felonies, uh, different things like that. And, and so I already started behind. Amen. And so to be a young person, uh, to be here, amen, in, involved in the things of God, Listen, don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted. Listen, God wants to do tremendous things uh, throughout the church. And again, like I said, it starts with the youth. Uh, anybody know Albert Einstein? Many of us do. Albert Einstein, he's veered as one of the greatest uh, physicists of all time and a genius to many. The talented and independent mathematician changed, no doubt, how we see the universe through his theories and visions. Um, but there's a true story about Albert Einstein, and it reads like this. It said, Albert Einstein was traveling from Princeton on a train. When the conductor came down the aisle punching tickets, Einstein reached into his vest pocket, and he could not find his ticket. So he reached into his trouser pocket. It wasn't there. So he looked into his briefcase, but still, he could not find his ticket. It goes on to say he looked in the seat next to him. But it was not there. The conductor kindly said, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are. We all know who you are. And I'm sure you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. The conductor then continued his way punching tickets. And just before he went to the next car, he turned around and he saw the great scientist on his hands and knees looking under his seat for his ticket. The conductor rushed back to, to Einstein. He said, Dr. Einstein, Dr. Einstein, don't worry. I know who you are. It's not a problem. You don't need a ticket. Einstein said to the young man, he says, I too know who I am. But what I do not know is where I'm going. And so if I could ask you as a young person in this place, do you know where you're going to this morning? Do you know where you're going? You know, that's an honest question. Um, and it seems real practical to many. Um, but it, what's intriguing to me is, is to see a lot of young people, they have no clue on where they're going in life. They have no vision for the things of God. They have no vision when it comes uh, to their future. So again, can I ask you, do you know where you're going this morning? You see, it's possible to know the right people. You may have tons of potential. Your parents may have pastored. You may have grandparents in the ministry. But again, where are you going? 
Where are you going? You see, one of the most painful things in life, a uh, pastor could agree with this, is to see young people again with no vision. You see, the next generation are young people. They have no clue on, wh- on where they're going in life. And even parents, they're trying to do their best with their, with their, with their teenagers. But I've even seen, uh, believe it or not, uh, maybe it's just in Chandler, but a lot of parents, they've given up. It's like they, they, they get to a point where they just throw their hands up with their, with their young people. And it's just like, w- what should they do? You know, they run out of options. They run out of things. They, they've run out of discipline. Spankings aren't working. Ground, grounding them is not working. And, and so they just they throw their hands up. Young people, as I mentioned, they have tremendous potential, but they waste it because they have no vision for their future. You know, they're focused on more on social media, TikTok, Instagram, right, Snapchat. I remember when I was a young person, all we had was MySpace. Anybody remember MySpace? Some, we, we aging ourselves a little bit, right? You get to decorate the background, play a little bit of music. You got your top five favorite friends. Right. And you get into fights with some of your friends because they're not in your top five. But today, our our young people, they're consumed with this right here. Cell phones will be the death of this generation, uh, no doubt. And, And the reason being is because you're consumed with the outside world, social media. As I mentioned, Snapchat, right, Instagram, TikTok, the little dances and all that kind of stuff. My kid, I have teenagers now. I'm only 33 years old, but my, my uh, son, he's 12. My daughter's 13. It'll be our first year at boot camp uh, to San Antonio, Pastor Richard Ruby. And so she's super excited about that. But I have teenagers, so I understand as being a parent what it's like and, and, and how the world and schools, amen, they pump garbage into young people. And so it's, it's very difficult if you're not careful to focus on the things of God. Young people, no kingdom vision. You see, I'm not talking about carnal desires to be rich. No doubt a lot of us have desires to have careers. and, and uh, Because how many know you've got to have a good job to survive today? I don't know about here, but in Chandler, it's expensive to live. I was just talking to Brother Aaron about that, man. The price has gone up extremely. Folks are moving in from California so gas is through the roof. Um, we're paying almost $5 a gallon for gas. And, and so it's a nightmare. And so I get that you have to work jobs. You have to have careers. But that's not what I'm speaking about this morning. What I'm speaking about is kingdom vision. When it comes to the things of God, as you sit uh, in this assembly, even no doubt this morning, how's your mind when it comes to the things of God? What are your plans when it comes to the things of God? Do you have any desires to fulfill any true purpose and meaning in God's kingdom this morning? We all know Proverbs 29, without a vision, people perish. But again, this is especially true, I feel, with this generation. Because how many know we're living in the last days? I truly believe that, that this generation, you guys are the last hope for your generation. Before Jesus Christ returns, you guys are the last generation. And how many know hell knows this? And I'm not sure if you know it or not, but hell's not playing games with young people. There's young people that are stepping into eternity just like this each and every day. Each and every day. Close friend of mine, my friend Spencer Gafford, we're playing basketball. He stepped into eternity in his early 20s. Just like this. Doctors can't figure out the reason why. They have no clue on, 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 on how it happened. But young people, no doubt, even younger than him, teenagers, stepping into eternity. And as I mentioned, I feel like it's because hell knows. Listen, you guys are the last hope. You guys are the last hope. We see young people committing suicide at an all-time high. Statistics say on average... One person dies by suicide every 10 minutes. 
right now. Somebody just stepped into eternity, committed suicide. And that's just in the U.S. alone. Can you say no vision? They have no hope for their future. They feel uh, that there's nothing worth living for. Because uh, believe it or not, if you're living for this world, the Bible's clear, it'll perish. But listen, the kingdom of God is, is for eternity. And that's what you should be living for this morning. And so I begin to ponder, you know, uh, how is it that, 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 that people are, are committing suicide? I remember even being a sinner. Listen, the last thing on my mind was committing suicide. I was having fun. You know what I mean? I was in the world. The Bible says sin is fun for a season. And listen, I was having fun. I'm honest with my teenagers. Sin is fun for a season, but what the world doesn't tell you is there's going to be payment. There's going to come a day where hell is going to require payment for that sin. And if you're not covered by the blood of Jesus, listen, you're going to pay a tough price. Teen pregnancies, right? Um, people are uh, divorced. Uh, you, you see, as I mentioned, uh, uh, gang violence, um, uh, just pornography, you name it. The, the, the world that we live in is bound, broken, and lost. And so I began to think about this when I was in pre, uh, Prescott uh, because there was two young girls in my youth group that were contemplating suicide at this time. And they, 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 both of them had an attempt on their life. They tried to take their lives. These two young ladies, church kids, raised in church, raised in the things of God. And that brought me to this message tonight. And so I begin to think, you know, I begin to pray to God and ask God, you know, why is it? You know, I could even understand a sinner wanting to commit suicide, but how is it that God's young people, people that are, are, are serving God, people that are involved in the things of God, how they can come to a place where they want to take their own life? God's young people. And God dropped this on me. They, they, they don't know where they're going. They have no plan. They have no vision. And so I want to preach a sermon uh, this morning that I've entitled, Know where you're going, and again, out of the book of Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, uh, the parable of the ten bridesmaids. It says, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps, but did not uh, not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they became drowsy and fell asleep. The Bible says at midnight, the, the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up, they trimmed their lamps. The foolish one said to the wise, Give us some of your oil. Our lamps are going out. No, they replied, they may not be enough for the both of us, you and me. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut later on the other also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I do not know you. Let's pray. Father God, I pray, God, this morning, God, by the Holy Ghost, that you would come down, God, that you would anoint my lips, God, every word spoken, God, I pray. Let it penetrate the heart of the sinner, God. Let it, every word spoken, God, hit its intended target, God, that not one leave this place the same. God, not one escape conviction, God, but you would challenge these young people, God, to live for you, God, and all God's people said. Amen. Amen. Know where you're going. Let's look firstly at keeping focus. You see, the bridesmaids in the Bible here, it's a picture of the church. They're virgins. These are young people. We see that they lost focus. They fell asleep, the Bible tells us. But how many know God has called us to stay alert and to be ready for his return? We hear about the rapture. But a lot of us, if we're, if we're honest, we don't think about it very often, right? It's, it's just a movie, an old school movie where folks disappear and they, they've got these movies uh, um, out. Um, they, they, they try and um, mimic these uh, through dramas. No doubt there, there's dramas where the lights will shut off and the lights come back on and then people are missing, right? 
But can I ask you this morning, do you truly believe the rapture, young people? That the rapture can happen any moment. The Bible says a twinkling of an eye, a blink of an eye. Right? But if you really believe it, does your life show it? The way you're living? Are you focused on God's kingdom? If I was to ask you, where do you see yourself in two to six years, would you be able to answer that question, young people? Do you have any type of vision? Do you have any type of desire? Or is everything about, like I said, social media, friends, having fun, video games? Any gamers in the house tonight or this morning? Many of us, I'm a gamer too, it's okay. Pastor Seawright, I'm, 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 I'm pretty good as well too. I play with my son every once in a while. Um, but, but, but listen, life is more, I tell my son this all the time, listen, life is more than just video games. You know what I'm saying? My son, he's wanting to spend real money on fake clothes. I just don't get it. <laughs> Two, 2K, 2K, um, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm getting old. I'm aging myself, but my son, he plays 2K. This is a NBA basketball game. And so it's all about your drip. He tells me, you got to have drip, dad. And drip, um, for old folks, that, that's your style. you got to have swag. And so he's asking me every, every month, it seems like, for, for $20, $30, so that he can put the money on a, on a gift card so he can buy fake clothes in the game. But, and then I'm like, son, but you go to school looking like a bum. So you, so you got drip on the video game, but you look like a bum in real life. I don't get it. you got to help me with that. You know what I mean? The, 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 back in my day when I, we used to go to high school, man, I could not wait to get dressed in the morning. Get my Air Force Ones out, you know what I'm saying? White tee, all iron, crispy, you know? But today's generation, you guys go to school in pajamas, Crocs, you know what I mean? I just don't get it. I don't get it. But you got to have the best gear and the best on the video game. I'm, I'm, I, don't, I don't get it. Somebody help me. But do you have vision for your future this morning? Can I tell you, vision can be lost as well. Vision can be lost. This comes through distractions. Distractions come in all forms, uh, from all directions, but the result is the same each time. Distractions, they take us off course. They either prevent us from experiencing something that God has for us or it puts us in the wrong position. A distraction is something that takes away your attention from your, 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 your actual purpose and focus in life. Distraction comes from the Latin word dis, which is the apart, and uh, trahir, which is to drag or to be drug away from your task. You see, the Bible is, is, is filled with, with, with real life stories. A lot of times, young people, you think, you know, being raised in children church, and things like that, you know, David and Goliath, Peter, uh, all these, these are like superheroes that are not real. But no, the Bible's real. These are real testimonies of lives of, of people that were just like you and I, humans, that, that, that made bad decisions so that we don't have to make them, we don't have to repeat them. And so if you read your Bible, we see um, these, 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 these people who made bad decisions Pastor Campbell always says, don't be a, good te- uh, a, a bad illustration and a good sermon. And so what he's saying is, is don't allow your life to become um, uh, some, something somebody else can, can learn from by a bad decision that you made. But again, the Bible's filled with people who were distracted. We know Samson, he was distracted. Why? By carnal relationships. Young people, we know about that. Right? I, I don't know if it's Justin Chandler, maybe no other youth group, but my young people, they're distracted by carnal relationships. No doubt the opposite sex. They're trying to figure out how they can have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, and they're only 13 years old. It's like, listen, kid, you got the rest of your life to be an adult. But listen, right now, it's okay to be a teenager. Don't rush the process. Listen, take your time. Don't rush in, in, into these relationships that ultimately, when you become an adult, you're going to regret because you made bad decisions. Samson, 
His eyes, the Bible says, were plucked out. He lost his vision. Why? Because again, carnal relationships cost him his vision. Who else was distracted? The Bible tells us more stories. We know Martha. Martha in the Bible, she was a Christian. She, Luke 10, 40, the Bible says, but Martha was very busy and distracted with all of her serving responsibilities. She was serving. Jesus was in her house at the time, but she was more focused on, on, on task and doing things rather than on Jesus Christ himself. Uh, there's a story, um, uh, on my own testimony uh, about a couple that was real close to me and my wife. Uh, I became door director uh, at the time. Uh, Pastor Campbell, he, he brought me in the office um, and let us know, listen, you guys are going to be the door directors. And we agreed to do this. But how many know the hype around conference? Everybody's trying to figure out who's getting sent out. Everybody's trying to figure out who's going to be the next door directors. And so um, at this time, there was this couple that was running um, in, the, in the same path as me and my wife. They were doing fantastic. But pastor made a decision for me and my wife to become door directors. And it affected them spiritually because they weren't happy with the decision that pastor made. They lost their vision. It cost them. Today, they're divorced. They've got multiple children. Life is in shambles. All because they lost vision in the house of God. Can I tell you, young people, you can be involved in ministry. You can be involved in the things of God and you can lose your focus if you're not careful. The Bible tells us that these virgins, that they were, they were, they were called to, to be set apart, to shine their light. They were involved in the things of God. But the Bible tells us that they fell asleep. They lost focus. Can I ask you, are you sleeping? Some of you even sleeping here right now. I can see you. The donuts, they just got to you. You got the itis. You ate, you ate too many donuts. You see, back when, I, back when we had, uh, anybody still have Jesus people weddings? Anybody, young people, you see these Jesus people weddings within the church? We, just, we actually have one coming up here Sunday. Uh, Sister Taylor in the church, she's getting married. She's having a Jesus people wedding. Um, but I remember when me and my wife got married, uh, Jesus people weddings, uh, the bride and the bridesmaids would meet upstairs to get dressed. Her bridesmaids would, would, would come and they would, you know, decorate or put our makeup on and get her all ready, make sure she's ready for me, my bride, right? And so they would put her, get her makeup on and, and do all these things. Um, but it's a great illustration because that's exactly what the Bible is speaking about. The Bible calls it bridesmaids. They're, the, the job for the bridesmaids is to make sure that the church, which is the bride, is prepared for Jesus' return. Jesus is the groom, the Bible tells us. And he's going to return for his church, which is the bride. But it's our jobs as the bridesmaids to make sure that the church is prepared. God says, I want to come out. I want you to come out and shine your light. You see, in biblical times... Even in our text, the Bible tells us that the job of the bridesmaids was to come outside with your, their lamps filled with oil and to shine the light outside to make a way for the groom to return. You see, how many know it's easy to shine your light when you're in the church, when everybody's shining with you? But God says, no, I want you to come outside. I want you to go to your schools. I want you to go... Uh, to your, your workplaces and, and shine your light bright. Shine your light bright and, and draw others in that, that, that when Jesus returns for his church, that the church is prepared. So let's consider, secondly, priorities. Are your, how, are, how are your priorities this morning, young people? How are your priorities? You see, not only did the bridesmaids lose focus, but the Bible tells us five didn't have their priorities in order. They weren't prepared. They weren't prepared. You see, we all have, 
the same amount of time. We have 24 hours in a day. We've got seven days in a week. We've got 52 weeks in a year. And how many know only God knows how many years we have left? How many days we have left? How many hours we have left? And you see, young people, if you fill your time with things that don't matter, you won't have time for things that do. There's just not enough time. There's not enough time. So can I ask you, what do you spend your time on? What do you, what do you like doing? What do you spend your time on? Do, do, you, do you dig into this word? Do you dig into God's word? Do you like the things of God? Right? Or, or like I said, is, is this your life? They say, they call it screen time. I'm still trying to get used to this iPhone. I'm not. Um, I, I used to be an Android guy. They finally got me to, to switch over to Apple, and I, I regret it. But um, they show the screen time and all that kind of stuff. How's your screen time? And listen, you're not the only ones. I know as it being an adult, some of us, if we're not careful, we find ourselves on YouTube. Hours go by. I'm guilty. Trust me. Huge sport fan. I, I love fishing. I love, uh, you know, the same things that most of us love. Hunting. Believe it or not, I, I like hunting. But listen, if we're not careful, we can be distracted. We can lose focus on God's eternal purpose, God's eternal plan for our lives and it's easy the world we live in is 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 filled with different things activities things you can can do I'm, I'm a pickleball champion now anybody else play pickleball in here all the young people some of those okay the pickleball is actually for old folks believe it or not when I go to the I got a membership actually um, and, and every time I go I'm, I'm, I'm in there my first time I'm, I've only played a few games but um, I'm in there, man, and I'm getting whooped by these old ladies, man. I'm like, gosh, they, gosh, I'm like, have mercy on me. Gosh, man, but it's, it's a fun game. It's really fun. But like I said, if you're not careful, these things can take priority. They, they, they can take, begin to take precedence over what really matters most, and that's God's kingdom and God's eternal purposes and plans for our lives. And so let's close with keys to vision. Keys to vision. You, say, you see, every day is another opportunity to get closer to God's destination, which is his destiny for your life. I want to tell each and every young person in this place, listen, God has destiny. He has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. He has a purpose for your life. Listen, when I came into the church, like I said, I was bound, I was broken, I was lost, no hope, and God did a miracle. But listen, if he can do it for me, he can do it for you. He can do it for you. But it's up to you. Will you take it personal? Will you make it personal? You've got to, somewhere you've got to know what you want in life. You've got to know what you want in life. And it's got to be, like I said, it's got to be more than just video games and social media. One day you're going to blink and you're going to be an adult. I tell my young people this all the time because it's like today's generation, you guys don't realize it. You don't realize it. And, and you blink just this, uh, uh, just this past month. I've, I've had the privilege to be a part of over like 10 graduations. My young people, they, they were raised in church. Some of them, some of them came um, from the street life, but no doubt they got saved. They got saved as a teenager, and they've grown up. And now I blink, and now they're graduating. They're driving vehicles, and, and they're, they're going off to college. They're making these decisions that are so critical for their future. And it's like many of them, they have no clue. They have no clue. They're, they're, they're seniors in high school. They just graduated, and it's like, what are your plans for God? and they don't have any. Can I tell you, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Some of them, they're going off to college. 
Listen, I, 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 res I respect people that go to college and they get degrees. But listen, that can't be the end all, be all. There's life outside of college, believe it or not. And most colleges are filled with young people that are destroying their lives with alcohol, drugs, perversion. I worked uh, for the government for a few years and I did collections for student loans. And it's, it's, it's consumed this generation, student loan debt. And a lot of times uh, the debt that, that these kids are are taken out for schooling, they're not even going to school for those things. They don't even graduate, many of them. The jobs that they're working today aren't even the jobs that they went to school for. And so if I could leave you with anything, young person, listen, don't be consumed with college. Don't let college destroy your life. And so how do we keep focus? How do we keep our vision? You see, some of us, this might require getting back on track. If you're honest with yourself this morning, somewhere you've gotten spiritually distracted. Rather it be, like I said, through a relationship, rather it be through your own selfish desires, but you've gotten off, you've gotten off track and you've been distracted, if you're honest. And so now it's going to require you to be consistent. It's going to require you to be intentional with the things of God. And so there are three keys that you can be sure that you're on the right path and that you know that you know where you're going. The first sign you know that you're on the right path is that Jesus is your focus, his kingdom and his return. When your life is aligned with this book this morning, it's one of the main keys that you know for 100 percent that you're on track and you're on the right path. You know, I'm not saying that everything will be perfect. How many know we'll still make mistakes? We all struggle. But listen, mistakes in God's will can be fixed. God is gracious. God is merciful to us. As we begin to make mistakes and we stumble, listen, God is faithful to pick you back up. But when you're out of the will of God, listen, there's, there's no real hope. There's no hope without Jesus. Matthew 6, 33, the Bible tells us, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. You see, a lot of us, we're seeking the kingdom of God. Many of you, you seek the kingdom of God. You're involved, as I said, in ministry. But if you're honest with yourself, you forgot about the righteousness part. Right? God says, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. But he doesn't stop there. He says, and his righteousness. Righteousness. Can I ask you, young person, are you righteous? Are you living righteous? Are you living clean? Because if you're honest, many of you, you're seeking the kingdom, but you're seeking carnality as well. Like I said, social media, cell phones will get you in trouble. Snapchat would have got me and my wife in trouble back in the day. Right? Instagram, YouTube, carnality, perversion. YouTube is filled with perversion. The agenda of the social media is to fill you with perversion, to pump garbage into you. Some of our young ladies, even in Chandler, the way they dress, promiscuity, driven by social media. They want to look like the world. They idolize these, these, these women that are unclean and living unrighteous. And so they go off into the world, no doubt. Young ladies, they lose their purity at an early age. Why? Social media, distractions. So are you seeking his righteousness? Are you seeking to be righteous, to be set apart? The Bible calls it being consecrated. It's an honest question. So how can we know that you know you know where you're going? The way you can assure you know where you're going is if you're following the steps of someone who's already arrived where you want to be. Can I ask you, who, who, who do you look up to, young people? 
Is it LeBron James? Is it these sports athletes? Right? Who do, who do young people, who do you guys look up to nowadays? Or is it powerful men and women of God, people that are, that, that are, are, are doing something that, that means something in the eyes of eternity? Pastor Campbell tells me all the time, listen, don't focus on things that will mean nothing in the eyes of eternity. That when you step into eternity and you stand before God, listen, God could care less about 2K, video games, and, and, and social media, right? What have you done with Jesus, the souls of men and women? People are dying in your schools and going to hell. So who are you following? And better yet, who's, who's following you? Are you an example, young person? Can others look up to you? How many young people you have younger brothers and sisters? Many of us, can I ask you, are you a good example for them? Are you a good example? Can they look up to you? Can they look up to you? Are you leading them astray? Listen, you're going to be held accountable when you stand before God. Listen, once you know what you want and where you want to go, in life, you must begin to organize your life to align with it. This takes the utmost focus and determination. You've got to focus. You've got to lock in on the things of God. You've, you've got to make it personal. I tell my young people all the time because it's like they come to the altar, they say a prayer, and they run out. And they go back into the, into the world, and it seems like, it's like, what, what did you say right here? What did you tell God? You know what I'm saying? Listen, it's got to be personal. It's got to be more, it's more than, I know we say it all the time when we're street preaching. Oh, all it takes is one simple prayer. You can be changed. Uh, it's, a, it's a prayer a child could pray. Yeah, that's true. But listen, it's more than just a prayer. The Bible tells us it's a lifestyle. Your life has to change. Somewhere in life, it's got to be more than just some words that you said when you were 10 years old. Being baptized, no doubt, when you were in your, in your early age, it's got to be personal. It's got to be more than just your parents making you come and attend a church service. But can I ask you, young person, is there a desire, is there any determination within your own heart to fulfill God's kingdom and his purpose for your own life this morning? Or have you been forced to be here? Or as Pastor Scott mentioned, uh, were, were you just here for the donuts? Or you just came, came here to, to meet some friends? No doubt we got the concert tonight. We're going to have a fantastic time. But is it, is it all just hype, young person? Or have you made it personal? Have you made it personal? So as we bring this to a close, I want to close on the oil. You see, it was the responsibility of the ten bridesmaids to light the path of the groom to the bride's home. When the call was made that he was on his way, the women were expected to light their lamps, and they met him before he entered the home. But the Bible tells us only those with extra oil were able to meet him. Matthew 25, 1 through 3, it says, you see in our text, the only thing that separated them, what does it say? The only thing that separated the five from being foolish and from being wise, it was the oil. It was the oil. The oil in the Bible is a picture of the Holy Spirit. It's a picture of what's on the inside of you this morning. I think I got a lamp here. Let me see. 
This is uh, an oil lamp. I'm not sure if back in the day if they looked like this or not, but I got this from um, Pastor Deontay. He brought this for me. As a, I can use this as an illustration. You see in the bottom there, you can kind of see that there's some oil in there. And like I said, I'm not sure if this is how the lamps looked back in the day, but this is a nice lamp. We all could agree, right? It looks nice. Looks nice. But a lot of y'all, y'all in here this morning, and there's nothing on the inside. Many of you. You look nice. You know what I'm saying? You, you look good. Shiny, bright. Some of y'all shining bright this morning. But on the inside, there's, there's nothing to sustain you. There's nothing to sustain you. As Brother Elijah mentioned, there's nothing burning. There's nothing burning on the inside. God tells us he needs the oil. The oil is what's going to sustain you. The oil is, is what's going to keep you burning for the long haul. You see, the Bible tells us that the five foolish, they were foolish because they weren't prepared. They didn't have enough oil. Some of us, if we're, if we're honest this morning, somewhere you were full. But as you begin to wait and as you begin to, as uh, Pastor Scott, he preached, waiting on God on Wednesday night. As you begin to wait, as you begin to go through things, your oils begin to get low. The Bible tells us that these foolish virgins, that they ran out of oil. And so that tells us that at one point they had enough. But as we begin to wait on God, as, as circumstances hit us, as life, as we go through life, as we, we're, we're challenged, struggles happen in life, the oil begins to run out. It begins to burn out. It begins to burn out. You know, what sticks out to me about the... Uh, what sticks out to me about these five foolish was that they asked for some oil from the wise. They asked for some oil from the wise. And what did they tell them? They told them no. You must go and buy your own. Matthew 25, 8 through 9. If you could put that up for me. Matthew 25, 8 through 9. The Bible tells us that they asked their neighbor. They asked the five wise. And they told them, no, you must go buy your own. Can I tell you tonight or this morning, somewhere you're going to have to pay a price for your own oil. Somewhere it's going to have to be more, like I said, than just coming to church. The rhetoric, how many know it can get repetitive? You know, we go to outreach on Saturdays, Wednesday. We know we got church Sunday. We know we got church, right? It can become repetitive. You know you got your youth group. Can I ask you, is your oil running low? Is your oil running low? When Jesus returns, can I tell you, you won't be able to borrow from your neighbor, your friends. Listen, youth groups. My wife, she's the only survivor from her youth group. She's one of the only people that survived. And I'm not to say, listen, that doesn't have to be your youth group. That doesn't have to be your youth group. But the reality is, I remember, listen, there, I don't know one person from back when I was in high school today. You can maybe ask your parents, youth leaders. There's a few youth leaders that are here. How many of you, 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 you're still hanging out with the same bros that you were hanging out with in high school? None of us. A lot of them are not here today. You've got to make it personal. You see, they all had the same title. They were all bridesmaids, but God only knew five. God only knew five, and, that's, and that can be scary. That's, so, that's a sobering thought as we begin to think about that. As I mentioned, the, the, the virgins, the, the bridesmaids, this is a picture of the church. 
This, this tells us that half of the church, God said, I do not know you. That's scary to know that because the Bible's clear in the, in the very beginning of our text. It says, this is Jesus. He's speaking a parable to his disciples. He says, then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins. He's explaining to his disciples, listen, when I return, it's going to be like this. The coming of Christ, the rapture, when it, when it happens, the Bible, Jesus, he's telling his disciples, it's going to be like this. It's going to be like t- uh, ten virgins, bridesmaids. Five were foolish, five were wise. Jesus tells us that that's half of the church may be left behind. And uh, listen, when Jesus is speaking, I take it personal. I hold him to his word. That's half of the church left behind. Do you know where you're going this morning? Do you know where you're going? Do you know where you're going? Do you know what you want for your future when it comes to God's purposes, God's kingdom? You know, a lot of us, like I said, you've got desires. You've got things that you want to do. Uh, one of my greatest disciples right now, his name's Jono. He's doing fantastic. He was a, um, a salutedictorian, um, great aspirations. He wants to join the Air Force and fly fighter jets. And so he's got a full scholarship. He's going to be moving to Prescott and attending the Prescott Church. Just turned 19 years old, uh, doing fantastic. He know what he wanted for his life. But I had to have a hard conversation with Jono. And I asked him, listen, wh- where does God fit in this? You know, it's okay to want to join the Air Force. It's okay to, to have aspirations. But listen, son, listen, where is God in the middle of all this? Listen, keep God in the center of your life. Don't be distracted. Don't allow the world to dictate your spirituality. And listen, that's the same with you young people. It's okay to have desires. It's okay to 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 want to go to college and 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 to have these these plans and 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 desires for your life. But can I leave you with this? Don't allow the world to dictate your spirituality. Don't allow the world to dictate your spirituality. Listen, know what you want when it comes to God's kingdom. Know where you're going. If I could have every head bowed and every eye closed in reverence to your neighbor uh, this morning. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, God, for your presence. As our musicians begin to make their way, God, we thank you for all you did this morning. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God. Hallelujah. You're in this place and you're a young person or you're an old person. You're in this place and listen, if you're honest, you found yourself in this message. You don't know what you want in life. You don't know what you want. You've been distracted. You've got off track. And listen, God is not at the center point of your life. He's not the compass of your life. He's not guiding your decisions. Listen, you're beginning to make some some bad decisions. No doubt you've made some bad decisions. We all have. But you're in this place this morning. And you want to acknowledge that you're not right with Jesus Christ. And you want to make it right with an uplifted hand. Just slip up your hand. Slip up your hand. Be honest with Christ this morning. You want to make it right. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to make it personal, like I mentioned. Just slip up your hand in this place. Anybody, anybody in this place, you want to get your heart right with Jesus. Young people, from left to right, front to back, you want to acknowledge, I see that hand. Anybody else, you want to acknowledge that you're not living for Jesus. I see that hand. Hands are going up. Listen, we don't want to leave you out. 
Just slip up your hand. Slip it up where I can see it. Slip it up. We're not going to hold this out too much longer. I see that hand. Anybody else? You want to make it right this morning. You want to acknowledge that you want to accept Jesus Christ into your heart. You want him to be the focal point. You want him to guide your decisions. Slip up your hand. Uplifted hand. Anybody else? I've seen a couple hands. Anybody else? We're not going to hold this out too much longer. But you want to acknowledge that you're not living for Jesus. Your heart is not right with the living God. Slip up your hand. Slip up your hand. I want to do one more thing. Maybe you've walked with Jesus. It's a picture of the bridesmaids, like I mentioned. You walked with Jesus. You had the oil on the inside. But as you begin to go through life, listen, the oil begin to run low. You're in this place and your oil's running low. You're, you're dry. You're dry this morning, but listen, you need a refill. Slip up your hand. You want to accept Jesus Christ back into your heart. You want to rededicate your life. Backslider, come home. I see that hand. Anybody else? You're backslidden in heart. You go to school and you act one way. You come to church, you act another way. That's you. Slip up your hand. Slip up your hand. Listen, we're not going to hold this out too much longer. But listen, we don't want to leave you out. Slip up your hand. Anybody else? Young person. Listen, don't worry about your neighbor. Don't worry about your friends because when you stand before God, friend, it's going to be you and Jesus. Like I said, those friends that you have today, who knows if you'll know them when you're an adult. Listen, slip up your hand, young person. Don't be left out. You're backslidden in heart. You're backslidden. Listen, if you lifted your hand, slip it up again where I can see it. There was a hand over here, hand over here, hand over here. I see another hand over here in the middle. A hand was over here lifted. If you could all just lift up your eyes and look at me. You meant that. You meant that. You meant that. I believe you did. You meant that. If you could slide out of your seat, somebody's going to come and pray with you. I want to pray with you. If you want to slide out of your seat, we just want to say a sinner's prayer with you. Accept Christ into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Don't be discouraged. Listen, we don't do this to embarrass you. We don't do this to embarrass you. If you want to go ahead and kneel down, we're going to have somebody come and pray with you. If we could have any altar workers, any adults, if we could make your way and begin to pray with these. There was another hand over here on the right side. If you want to slip out of your seat. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God. Amen. Again, for the opportunity. But if we could all stand, these altars are open. Listen, if you found yourself in this message, you've been distracted. You've got off task. Listen, God wants to get you back on track. God wants to get you back on track. Listen, to be a true ambassador, it's got to be more than just the emotions. It's got to be more than just going through the motions, friend. It's got to be a lifestyle. Longevity. Longevity is what separates you. Let's sing it out. Jesus, lover of my soul. Jesus, you are the lover of my soul. And Jesus, I will never let you go. You've taken me, You've taken me from, from the miry clay. Set my feet upon the rock now. I love you and I need you. You're my only hope. I'll never let you go. of my soul Jesus I will never let you go we could all stand and sing it out you've taken me from the miry clay you set my feet upon the rock now, and now I, I know and I love you God I love you I need you and I need you're my only hope, I'll never let you go. You're my Savior, God. You're my Savior. You're my closest my friend. My closest friend. Yes, God. And 
I will worship you until the very end. Would you tell him you love him this morning? God, we love your name. We honor your name, God. We worship you. We honor you, Lord. Would you still play? Play quietly. Amen, amen. I feel the presence of God, amen. I want to do one more thing before we head out, amen, or two more things, actually. Um, before we do anything else, amen, I want to pray for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, that's the oil that's going to separate you. That's what's going to separate you. That's what's going to take you the long haul, longevity. Listen, anybody can do something for a little bit of time. Anybody. I don't care what it is. Any of us can do, as, as human, God created us. Listen, we can do anything for a little bit of time. But I want to tell you, young people, what separates you is longevity. Longevity. Consistency. That's what God's looking for. And I want to tell you, listen, what's going to separate you is what's on the inside. What's on the inside? That's what's going to take you the long haul. And listen, if you're in this place, you're a young person, and you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult for you. And so I want to pray for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You're in this place, and you're not filled. If we could take a couple steps back. You're in this place this morning, and you're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, don't be embarrassed. This is your opportunity. It's like superpowers. Superpowers. And listen, Jesus, God, he's given us this as a tool to overcome the enemy. This is what God left us with, his Holy Spirit. And listen, it's got to be burning on the inside of you. And so you're in this place. You're a young person. You're not filled with the Holy Ghost. You've never been filled. Or maybe you're a young person. At one point, you were filled. But listen, your oil, as I mentioned, is running a little bit dry. It's a little bit, this one's kind of full, but you, you, you run a little bit dry. You need a refill. I've been there. I've been there. You've gotten carnal. Hanging around the wrong folks. Listen, hanging around with the wrong folks will get you in trouble. It'll burn your oil right out. It'll burn your oil right out. But listen, that's you. You're a young person. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I want you to take a step forward. Take a step forward. You're not filled with the Holy Ghost. You're a young person. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Listen, don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Step forward. It's a, it's a, it's a privilege. Come on, step forward. Come up front. I want you to step out. Step out. Come, come up front. Yeah, come on. There's more of you. I know there's more of you. There's more of you. Don't be embarrassed. Come up front. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to go on record before God. You want to be filled with this Holy Spirit. Come up front. Anybody else? That's it, okay? Pastor Scott, if you want to come, I want to help you, uh, have you come and help us pray. Many more are coming. Yeah, feel free to come up front. We want to pray with you to be filled. Get the superpowers. Amen. Pastor Campbell calls it the superpowers. Listen, this is what's going to set you, up, set you apart, man. This is what's going to take you to that next level. This is what's going to take you to that next level. I truly believe it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to begin to worship God. Listen, it's not your native language. It's not English. But as you begin to speak out to God, you begin to cry out to God and pray and ask God to fill you. God's going to fill you. Listen, God's going to fill you. God's going to fill you. Okay? Listen, it, God's going to fill you. And listen, it's a gift. It's a gift. It's free. Jesus, he paid the price. We all know that. But listen, the Holy Spirit is a gift from God. It's free. All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is accept it. So we're going to go ahead and sing out this song, Jesus, Lover on My Soul. If we can go ahead and sing out that song, you guys can go ahead and help me. But you're in the front. You want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I want you to lift up your hands, begin to pray and cry out to God. Listen, we're going to come by, we're going to lay hands on you, and God's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Church, if you can help us pray, 
Hallelujah. God, I pray right now, God, that you would touch Ryan. God, that you would fill him with your Holy Ghost. Fill him with your spirit. Begin to speak it out. Fill him right now. Yes, there it is. There it is. Speak it out. Speak it out. There it is. He's got it. Speak it out. Oh, Speak it out. Begin to speak out. God, fill him with your spirit right now. Yes, hallelujah. Touch him right now. Begin to say words. Speak out to God. Cry out to God. God, fill him right now. Oh, God, we're desperate for a Holy Ghost fill, God. Fill him, God. Yes, oh, with the Holy Ghost right now. Oh, shikondo robo shikatalalalabatata. Fill him with your spirit right now, oh God. Oh, shikandalalalabasoto robo sai. Fill him, Lord. Fill him right now. Shikandalalalabasata. Fill him with your spirit, God, right now. Set him apart, Lord. Shikondo robo sai. Fill him, God, from the innermost being, oh Lord. With the Holy Ghost right now, fill him. Begin to speak it out. Oh, hallelujah. Fill him with your spirit right now, God. Worship God. Worship him. Yes, hallelujah. Speak it out. Speak out to him. Fill him, oh God, with your spirit. We believe you, Lord. Fill it right now, God, the Holy Ghost, God. Oh, Shanda, da, 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 ba, Shanda, she called Robo Shanda. Yes, oh God, touch him right now. Fill him with your spirit. Fill him with your spirit, oh God. Yes, God, the anointing that breaks every yoke. Oh, touch him right now. Oh, she called no Robo Shanda. Hallelujah, God, we thank you. God, we thank you. Oh, would you give him one more praise? Hallelujah, God, we thank you. Oh, shikanda la 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 basata. Yes, God, we love your name. We thank you, God, we worship your name. Yes, hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. A couple of you were filled. Raise your hand if you were filled. Many of you were filled. Yes, hallelujah. Let's give God praise for that. Yes, hallelujah. Listen, if you were filled, if you were filled this morning, you've got to practice it. You've got to practice it. It's a heavenly language, the Bible calls it. So it'd be like if you learned Spanish today. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take some time. But listen, the more you practice it, the more you cry out to God in, in your secret place in prayer. Listen, even tonight, before you go to bread, Pray in tongues, speak in tongues. You got to begin to speak it. And the more you speak it, the more it'll flow. But listen, God is faithful. God is so faithful. And listen, if you weren't filled, it's not the end of the day. It's not the end of the day. Listen, God wants to fill you. God wants to fill you. God wants to fill you. And I got a word for a few folks. Isaiah, God's got a word for you. Listen, God wants your life, not your talents. You're gifted, man. You've got talents out of this world. I heard you playing the piano, play some drums, probably you play musical instruments. These are giftings that God's given you. God gave you talents, and it's good that you use them for God's glory. But listen, God says he wants more from you. He wants more from you. And listen, even right now, I felt you when you came up to get prayed, to be filled with the Holy Ghost. That took a step for you. That took a step for you. But listen, God's going to give you it. God's going to give it to you. But what he's asking for is, is, listen, discipline will outrun your talents. Discipline will outrun your talents. If you take a young man that's disciplined and you take a young man that's gifted and talented, listen, the discipline will win every time. The discipline will win every time. And listen, I want to pray for you. Listen, God says he wants you to get alone with him in a secret place. You've been running on your giftings. You've been running on your talents. But listen, in that secret place, that's where God wants you to get. That's where God wants you to get. Let me pray for you. Father God, I pray for Isaiah right now, God, that you would touch him. God, that you would make yourself personal to him, God, in that secret place. God, that you would take him to another level, God, when it comes to his ministry, God, and his purpose in you. 
We thank you, God, for all you're going to do. Oh, bring it to pass in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Lucius, God's got a word for you. Come up front. I want to pray for you. God's got a word for you as well. Listen, God wants to use your life to reach your generation. He wants to use your life to reach your generation, but he wants you to surrender. I know you're involved in maybe in some ministries. You, you're involved, you do a few things, but listen, Jonah, Jonah is what comes to mind. And God wanted me to ask you, do you have to be swallowed and spit out by the world for you to catch it? That he wants to do something major in your life, man. And it's like there's some resistance. There's some resistance. You're hesitant. You, you, you just something in you won't go all in. It's like when you, before you get into a pool, you know, you dip your toe in. It's like, ooh, it's cold, chilly. Huh? And so you put a foot in and it's like you pull it out. It's like, ooh, it's cold, man. It's cold. God says he wants you to go all in, man. You just got to jump in. You got to be fully submerged. And listen, God says that there's a multitude that's waiting for you. And listen, he's going to use your life just like Jonah, willingly or unwillingly. Whether he got to swallow you up and spit you out, he's going to use you, man. He's going to use you. But how much easier it'll be if you just surrender, if you surrender. Hallelujah. God, I pray, God, for Lucius right now, God, that your hand would be upon him. God, that you would help him, God, to step out, God, for all that you have for his life, God, that he'd make it personal. God, that he'd surrender fully, God. That he go all in, God, for your plans and your purposes for his life. Hallelujah, God, we thank you for that. Oh, shiko robo shatalalalabashi. Amen. It's Malaysia here. Malaysia's not here. Maybe we'll catch her tomorrow morning. We've got one more, Ryan. Ryan, listen, I met you. You came up and introduced me. You introduced yourself to me. And God spoke to me, man, that, listen, I'm not sure what, what it's like at home. Do you have a father figure? Is your father in your life right now? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, okay. Okay, not in your house. Listen, God brought you to such a place as, uh, for a time as this, man. I don't know what your situation is like. I don't know you. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where you come from. How long you been coming? A couple months. So you're, you're new to the church. Okay, listen, God brought you to this place for a reason. There's good men here, leaders. And God wants you to know you're a young leader. You've got some influence. But listen, somewhere you're going to have to surrender to authority, to the male figures that are here in this church. Pastor Scott, Pastor Ed, listen, link hearts with these guys, man. And sky's the limit what God wants to do in your life. God has purpose. He has a destiny for you. And God wants me to know that you're a young leader. You're a leader, man. But even being a leader, there's always a coach. There's always somebody else that we've got to submit to. And I want to tell you, when you begin to do that, they'll begin to shape you, man. They'll begin to mold you into the young man that you're going to be. Father God, I pray that you would touch Ryan right now, God. God, that your hand would be upon him, oh God, that you would begin to move in his life. God, help him, God, that he'd surrender. God, that he'd walk in the path, God, of righteousness, God. God, that he'd link hearts, oh God, with Pastor Ed and Pastor Scott, God, that you would mold him, shape him, God, into the disciple, the young man that you have for his life. We thank you in Jesus' name. Would you give God praise this morning? Hallelujah, God, we thank you. Alyssa, I've been asking your name for the last couple of days. God's got a word for you. God's got a word for you. Listen, you feel insignificant at times. Sometimes you can feel insignificant, whether it be at school. How old are you? 17. You working? No? So whether, whatever it might be, um, in, in somewhere in your life, sometimes you feel insignificant. And what I mean by that is you feel like you're, you're, you're an outsider at times. It's like you don't kind of fit in sometimes. Uh, but, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing because you're significant to God. God wants you to know, listen, that you're special, sweetheart. You got a gift. You, you, listen, God's given you a gift that, that, that you're faithful. You're faithful. 
and you take the things of God very seriously. And, and God wants you to know that sometimes you may feel insignificant, but you're significant to him. You're significant to him and you mean something to him. And when I begin to think as I was in prayer, actually, this morning, um, God, God wanted me to let you know, I see Job. God says, Has you, have you considered my servant Job? And so what God wants you to know is, is that sometimes you may feel insignificant, but that you're significant to him. And that not only does God know who you are, hell knows who you are. And they, they're, they're, they're fearful of you. They're fearful of you and all God has planned for you. So if you don't mind coming up, sweetheart, I want to pray for you. Listen, God wants to do tremendous things in your life. you got a tremendous destiny, and hell's scared of that. But just like Job, he had to go through a few things, challenging. And sometimes life can feel challenging. It's like, God, why is this happening to me? But God says it's happening because you're significant, and God's, God's beginning to challenge. He says, as you consider my servant Alyssa, and so hell's been, he's going to take some, some shots at you. But the, 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 the more you begin to stand, like I said, consistency, the stronger you become. Hallelujah. God, I pray you touch Alyssa right now, God. God, that you would continue to move throughout her life, God. God, I pray and I bind every demonic stronghold, God, that no weapon formed against her would prosper, God, that she'd stand for your righteousness, God, in these last days. God, let her be a testimony. Oh, Shiko Robo Satai. Give God one more praise. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, God. We thank you. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank you so much again for the opportunity to be here. I thank you, uh, Pastor uh, Scott, uh, Pastor Ed, for the privilege. Amen. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. Amen. We got the concert tonight. How many of y'all doing some music tonight? I'm super excited to hear the music. Amen. I love music. So super excited. Amen. You guys come. You be here tonight. I'm excited for what God's going to do. Come back tomorrow. Amen. God's going to minister. Young guys, they're bringing the fire, man. It, it, I love seeing these young guys preach the gospel, man. Tremendous destiny. Tremendous destiny from these young guys. And it's a, it's a privilege. Amen. I thank God as Pastor Scott comes. Let's give God praise. <laughs>